Hey, Ridge Youth. Um, I wish I could be there with you guys. Hope you guys are all doing well. I miss you guys big time. Um, unfortunately, my work schedule doesn't allow me to get to youth. Um, I work four in the afternoon till about one in the morning for York Region on the roads. So uh, that's why I haven't been at youth. That's why I haven't been on the Zoom calls. So I miss you guys big time. But I'm really glad that I can uh, at least film this and, and give you guys some thoughts from uh, James 4 from the Francis Chan video, the series we're doing on James. Um, so that's super exciting. So really glad I can do this. I miss you guys a lot, like I said, and I can't wait so I can come back out. My schedule should change in the spring and I should be able to come back out with you guys. But before I do anything, I'm gonna pray. Father in heaven, bless this word, bless your word, bless this time. And Father, glorify your name through me, through these words, uh, through your word. And, and just Father, we, so, we are so thankful for James and the words he put together for you, um, for us, so you can speak to us through these words, Father. Um, help us to align our thoughts with yours. Um, just create in us a drive to seek after your will, to, to live out your will, Father, for our lives. Um, and we just thank you so much that we can do this and uh, meet together like this. In your son's name I pray, amen. So uh, I know you guys just watched the video, so I'm just gonna get into the scripture and then I'll, uh, I'll just give you a couple thoughts that I had from, uh, from James 4. So James 4, 13 is where we're starting. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist, a mist that appears for a little while, then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If any one of you then knows the good they ought to do and does not do it, it is sin for them. It's sin for them. I'm going to back up to verse 13. Let's start right where, uh, where we started reading, verse 13. Um, James, James is talking to Jewish Christians, so they know God, they know, um, they know Christ, but they know the Jewish law, they know the, the Old Testament, the prophets. Um, so they know God speaks to people. They know God has a plan. Um, that's not that's not out of the realm of understanding for them. So, so James is speaking uh, and he's talking about a thought process. And, and at first glance, and I know um, it mentions this in the video, but at first glance, that, that verse doesn't sound very arrogant, doesn't sound very proud. Um, but if you think about the process, the thought process behind it, you'll see it. So if you think about it, let's, let's read it again. Now listen to you say, today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city and spend a year there, carry on business and make money. There's no mention of God there. There's no mention of his plan. There's no mention of seeking him, asking him. This thought process is a, is a selfish thought process. This is a arrogant and proud thought process. I don't need God. I don't need to, I don't need to ask God about my plans. I'm just going to do them and, and God's there. No, no, we, we ought not to think like that, but, but these guys are thinking like that. So, so how arrogant of me to think and make plans without a consideration of what God wants for my life. You think, you know, they're saying, we'll go here for a year. For a year, yeah. We don't even know if we have tomorrow. And we're making plans for a year. Now, don't get me wrong. Making plans is good and wise. But making plans in line with God. With God at the forefront of those plans. That you're not making plans out of selfish ambition, of things that you want to do. No, you're making, you make plans based on what the Lord wants for your life what you feel his leading for. There's a difference in that thought process. And these guys are just thinking what they want for their money, for their gain, for their life, without a consideration of the Lord. Now, they're making those decisions, not recognizing God's power. And when we do that, when we recognize God's power and sovereignty in our lives and in creation, let's read verse 15. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will do this or that. If it is the Lord's will, God is sovereign over everything, over your decisions and mine. God is sovereign. And so we shift. Did you catch that mental shift? There's a, there's a mental shift in thought from I want to what God wants. There's, there's not the we will go here and do this. It is we will do this if the Lord wills. And so there's a, there's a mental shift from what I want to what God wants for my life. And we got to make that mental shift. And I have to make that mental shift. And that's a serious 
that, that can cause serious problems in our lives. When we start thinking selfishly and, and, and our own interests and not considering God in our decisions, in our life. Um, God has a plan for your life and he will make it happen. God will make that happen in your life. If we are in constant relationship with God, if we are in scripture and in prayer, we, we will know what is right. We will know what God desires and our will will align with his will, right? You see how that works? When we know God better, we will know what God wants. And we can make our plans based on knowing who God is and what he wants. And we can do that with our lives and live a life pleasing to the Lord. So if the Lord wills, I will do this thing. And we make decisions based on that, based on the Spirit's leading and God's showing us his will. And I know God's will is a very uh, mysterious thing and hard to understand. We could do a whole nother message on that. Um, but just to keep this brief, we'll understand that God's will for our life will be made, uh, will happen. Will God will make that happen in our lives. Uh, if we are in constant relationship with him, he will reveal his will to us. Um, so yeah, our wills will align. And when we recognize and submit to God's authority, we will do what we know is right. And I said that before. So, so if we are in relationship with God, we understand who he is, what he knows, uh, what he knows is right and wrong, and he shows us those things. We know what to do. We know what God wants us to do because we know what is right. Okay? I hope we follow that. So verse 17, right? We know what is right. Keep that in mind. So we know what to do when we know God. We know his will. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is a sin for them. So what I just said is we know God. We're in constant relationship with him and in, in prayer and, and in, in his word and, and just getting, you know, so caught up in who God is, right? We know his character and what he wants for our lives um, because of what he said in his word. So if we know what is right, if we know God and we know what he thinks is right and and if we know what the scriptures say, how we should live, and we don't do that, that is a sin. Now, you might think, well, sin is an action, you know, that we do not mor murder, uh, do not commit adultery. Do not, do not, do not. But if you do not do what is right, that is a sin. Because you know what you ought to do. God has said, you know, Colin, do this thing for me. I have given you this work. Do this for me. And I say, I, I don't know about that. That's uncomfortable. That's a little awkward. You know, maybe, maybe some of you in high school, maybe uh, there's, there's somebody and, and you feel the you need to, we need to listen to the Spirit's nudge, right? And I know we've all felt that. So, so you're in high school and see there's, there's somebody sitting at a table alone and you think, ah, maybe they need somebody to sit with. You know, that would be a good witness. And, and you know, Christ would probably do that. He, he reached out to a lot of lowly people uh, of lowly esteem that he didn't consider uh, his, his reputation to be uh, tampered by that. Like he... He associated with those people and we need to do the same thing. Our heart needs to break for those, those people. And so maybe you're in high school and you see somebody sitting at that table and you think I should go sit with them, but that would be weird and that would be awkward. And my friends would think I'm weird and ah, I don't want to do this. So you don't do it, but you know, that was right. And this is convicting to me because I've been in that situation. I speak from experience. I'm not making this up. That, that conviction sucks knowing you didn't do what God called you to do, knowing you didn't do the right thing. When you could have, you very well could have. There was no, there's no reason you shouldn't have. And I know it's scary and I know it's hard, but we got to do those things for the Lord. So, so when we know what is right, when we know what we ought to do, but do not do it, that is a sin. So listen to that spirit's nudge. Listen to the spirit's nudge. That's God's working in you. That's, that's that promise that, that we have in our hearts of God. God living through us. He's using the Spirit to not just do work for Him, to, to reveal Himself to us uh, so that we can bring others to know Him. So if we do not do that thing that we know we ought to do, that's living in open rebellion to God. And I know that sounds extreme, but that's what it is. We are living in open rebellion to God when we are not doing what we know we ought to do for Him, for His sake. Romans 12, 1, we are a living sacrifice. We're living sacrifice. Now, to put this in a little bit more of a, a perspective, let's think of think of who we are and who God is, okay? So who God is, he is the creator of the universe, of the heavens and the earth, of me and you, and he gives us breath, he gives us life. And who are we? 
We are but a mist, it says. We are a mist, our life is a mist. Now don't get me wrong, we have inner value, intrinsic value being made in the image of God. So human life has value, don't get me wrong. But our life is so short and it's so fragile and the very breath we breathe is a gift from God. We need to recognize that, that our life is not our own. We are living sacrifices. That is who we are in Christ. And that is a beautiful thing. We could not live a better life. Live your best life, live for Jesus. That's your best life. That is your best life. Live for Jesus. Because he is creator, we are creation, and we are forgiven by the grace through Christ on the cross. And our lives, our lives are his. If we claim to be Christians, if we say, Jesus, you are my savior, my life is forfeit. And Jesus can do whatever he wants through my life. So when we neglect to do what Jesus calls us to do, when we neglect to do what we ought to do, what we know we ought to do because we are living sacrifices for the creator, that is living in rebellion to God. And that stings and God doesn't like that. And that hurts him because he wants to see you live your best life. And that's for him and his plan. So please brothers and sisters, live your best life for Christ. Now, if we know we can't have a selfish and proud thought process and if we know we have to uh, have a godly thought process of if the Lord wills and have our our decisions and our plans made um, if the Lord wills with him in mind in thoughtful prayer um, and we we try and do those things we know we ought to do as Christians then we will live in the way that James is asking us to live in the way that Jesus is asking us to live and that's a beautiful thing and so one final thought one final challenge from my heart for my heart and for yours. How will we live? How will we live? Will we live the way we want? Will I live the way I want? Or will I live the way God wants? Will I choose a life of selfishness and arrogance and pride? Or will I choose a life full of humility and submission to God's will. Is there an area in my heart, in my life, a dark corner that I haven't opened up to God yet and let him take full control of me? Is that true in your life? Those are things we need to think about. Are we gonna live a life of pride and arrogance or are we gonna live a life of humility and submission to the Almighty Creator. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word, for James, uh, and for these words that you've penned for my heart today, and, and to convict me to make decisions aligned with your will, to seek you when I make decisions, to put you first, to put you on the throne of my life. I pray that we will do that daily, that we will seek after you, that we will be in prayer and in devotion to your word, Father. Grow us closer to you so we know what is right. So we know the actions we need to do to glorify you, what we ought to do so that we might not sin, but live our best life for you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for salvation. And I pray that you will penetrate our hearts with these words and make us people who are eager to do what is right for you and live a life of humility and submission to you and not of pride and not of arrogance, Father. I pray these things in your son's holy and precious name.